Hello, hello, welcome back to the channel. My name is Louise. If you are brand new to the channel, and thank you so, so much for tuning in and finding me and all of that kind of stuff. I really hope that you stick around and I hope that you enjoy this content. So this is just gonna be a relatively short video all about the three top mistakes that I see as an audition panel member when auditionees come in to do classical texts. So if you're auditioning for drama school or if you're auditioning professionally for something classical, i.e. Shakespeare or some kind of Jacobean or even Greek tragedy plays, the language will be slightly different to what we use in everyday life now. And in the cases of drama school auditions, it's really important that we do ask you to demonstrate your acting ability through classical text because it's heightened. So we want to see how you are able to adapt your performance for a different style of text. And classical text poses some kinds of challenges. So we like to see how you deal with those in real time. So the first mistake that I always always see with people that come in to audition with classical text is that they don't translate the language. So Shakespearean or Jacobean language tends to be relatively complicated and quite poetic and it's not something that we generally read or see in day-to-day -day life. So you might struggle in the first instance to actually understand the text but the mistake comes when you don't actually figure out what is going on, what are you actually saying. So what's actually required is for you to go away and do your homework, do your research, actually look up in a dictionary or online what particular words mean because some words will have dual meaning they will have they will be double entendre and it's for you to decipher what one word does mean in the entire context of the thought and of the speech i've seen far too many people come into audition rooms who it is very very clear that they've not actually done any proper analysis work on what they're actually speaking about so they're just kind of blanketly saying these words with really no full understanding or ideas about how they're coming across with the language. And the language is a tool for you. It's something for you to actually use creatively and imaginatively in the moment. And you won't be able to do that unless you know what you're actually saying. It would be like if you were speaking a completely different language entirely. So for me, I don't speak Italian. So if I had to do some text that was in the language, then I would also be trying translating the language into English so at least I knew what I was talking about so I would know what I was trying to get across, how I was trying to achieve things, the overall energy and sense and emotion within the speech. All of that is incredibly important and when you don't do that research, rest assured it is really, really obvious. So make sure that you're translating the language before you even get into an audition room. The second big mistake that I find is not paying attention to the punctuation. So casting your minds back to English class at school, you all know that a full stop dictates the end of a sentence, the end of a thought, as does an exclamation mark, a question mark. And when it comes to Shakespearean and, and Jacobean language, for the most part, semicolons and colons do exactly the same thing. Now that is relatively generalized. So make sure that you're doing your research along the way. But what I see time Time and time and time again is when people come in to do drama school auditions and they're using say a Shakespearean speech usually we ask that you do something that is in verse as opposed to prose. Verse will have rhythm and structure within it. It usually goes along the lines of iambic pentameter. And what you'll find is that a thought will actually trace over several lines. But what I see time and time again are people just lingering and hovering at the end of a line as opposed to actually ending a thought. So if there is no punctuation at the end of a line, then it needs to actually be tied on to the line that comes after it. Because if you break up the thought, then the thought ceases to make sense. You wouldn't go through an entire piece of text and not pay attention to full stops because then everything meshes together and becomes incredibly vague. So we need to do the same with Shakespearean or Jacobean text. And the third thing, and the thing that I find almost comical sometimes when it comes to drama school editions, especially when you're looking at classical text, is this thing that we like to call Shakespeare voice. Now Shakespeare voice tends to only come out in classical text because it reads as poetry. And what we tend to do is we start to put this kind of energy and character on top that everything starts to sound and feel like velvet and it's all very dramatic and poignant and this, that, and, and it's just not realistic. It ceases to actually have any truth within it. It becomes a massive 
massive performance. And what we don't actually want to see in a drama school audition is a massive performance. It sounds counterintuitive, but we actually just want you speaking the text as you would if it was modern day text. It's really hard to make an accurate assessment of your capability as an actor when the Shakespeare voice comes out because it's putting a massive barrier up between you and the audience. You almost start sounding like a really kind of outdated Laurence Olivier performance, which was very much of its time. And we don't do that anymore on stage. We're looking for some kind of realism, some kind of naturalism, truth, grounding, and to actually see you as an individual through the text. So my advice would be whenever you're rehearsing classical text prior to an audition, just check in and make sure, does this actually sound like me? If I was actually saying these words translated in a way that would make sense to me, how would it come out? How would I actually speak these words? Making sure that you are grounding yourself instead of elevating yourself above to create this weird sound and effect of speaking and reciting poetry. It's not believable, it's not realistic, and it's not truthful. So there we go, they are my top three mistakes that you should be avoiding when you are approaching classical text. Now, if you are brand new to actually approaching classical text, maybe you've got an audition coming up professionally, maybe you're hoping to audition for drama school and the expectation is that you need to approach classical text. And if you're feeling that it's all a little bit of a minefield and you don't quite know how to adhere to the punctuation or how to accurately translate the language or any number of other obstacles that you find when you approach Shakespearean text, then get in touch. I offer one-to-one -one coaching on both contemporary and classical text to help you approach auditions both professionally and for drama school. I offer a 30 minute free discovery call, so just a chance for us to get to know each other and figure out what your goals are. And I offer coaching packages that you can take up for once a week or several times a week. It's really, really flexible and it's totally bespoke to you and your needs. So if that's something that you'd be interested in, then get in touch. All of my details are below and you can find me at my website, which is lmccoach.com. But thank you so, so much for tuning in. I really hope that you found this content valuable. And if you did, just make sure that you click like and that you subscribe to the channel and that you tell loads of people about it and you start chatting about punctuation and translating Shakespeare texts and all of that kind of stuff because that would make me really happy. <laughs> in quite a sad way, but really happy. But thank you so, so much for tuning in and I will see you next time. Thanks, bye.